Earlier this month, author and speaker Israel Wayne conducted a family renewal seminar at First Baptist Church in Van Wert. He also took the time to sit down with Jennifer to discuss his newest book, Questions Jesus Asks, Where Divinity Meets Humanity. Israel Wayne is a national author and speaker, husband, father of eight children with the ninth on its way, coming just in a few months. And he is the author of this brand new book, Questions Jesus Asks. We're so happy to have him in the studio today. Israel, thank you for joining us on Faith oh, and Friends. Great to be with you. We could talk probably about so many topics. You are, uh, you, you are a speaker in the family network. You travel around, you talk about um, how to revive families in a godly way. Mm -hmm. um, but we're gonna talk today about this particular book, Questions Jesus Ask, Where Divinity Meets Humanity, came out just earlier this year, so it's relatively new. Um, talk a little bit about the inspiration behind this book. Sure. Well, I wrote a book before this that was called Questions God Asks. And it came from a study that I was doing through the Old Testament. And when I was studying through the Old Testament, I noticed something that was a bit um, surprising to me. And that was that I noticed multiple times in the Bible where God asked questions. And I thought, why would God ask a question? I mean, God is omniscient, God knows everything. So what is the purpose of these questions? And so it occurred to me that if God was asking a question, it wasn't for his benefit, it wasn't that he didn't know the answer. So it must be for the benefit of the person who's being asked the question. There's something that he wants them to think about. There's something he wants them to consider. And so what I did is I took each of those questions and I tried to chart them out topically. Like what is the main topic or theme that this question addresses? So for example, in the Old Testament, God asked Moses, what's in your hand? And he asked Elijah in the cave, what are you doing here? And he asked Abraham, where is your wife? And he asked Balaam, who are these men with you? And so on, L lots of these different questions. So I thought the questions must be for these individuals. What is it that God wants them to think about and what are the topics being addressed? When I wrote out the different topics, I was surprised because it looked like, to me it looked like a systematic theology manual. Mm. It was almost all of the major doctrines of the Christian faith addressed in the questions that God asked. And I thought, I have to write this book. I have to explore this and sort of flesh out these questions. And I also believe that God never asks something arbitrarily or capriciously. If God asks a question, there's a, a purpose for us as well, because it's included in Scripture. So if there wasn't some meaning or some application for us as individuals, God would have just left it out of the Bible. So because it's included there, the, the question is also for us. There's something God wants us to think about. There's something he wants us to consider. These questions are applicable for us as well, thousands of years later. So I wrote uh, Questions God Asks, which was published last year. Well, and when I wrote out the topics for this book, Questions Jesus Asks, I was surprised and delighted to find that the topics covered in the questions Jesus asked in the Gospels were completely different topics than the questions God had asked in the Old Testament, which I found astounding. Because again, it looked like a systematic theology manual, but addressing very different aspects of Christian theology uh, through his questions in the New Testament. So I loved writing both of these books because I learned so much in the process and I felt like I, I came to know God better and I, I came to understand Jesus better and uh, learned so much and included in the, these books the kind of the historical background of some of these situations and just to help people kind of flesh out the context of these questions as well. Well, some of the topics that are covered here, uh, family, discipleship, money, healing, counseling, fear, servanthood, apologetics, suffering, and I'm just naming a few of them. Um, there's 20 chapters. Every single one of these chapters focuses on a relevant topic mm -hmm. in our lives today, yet starts with a question that Jesus asked and dives right into scripture. I love the fact that you have so many scripture references in each chapter, yet you also have um, modern day facts. You've done a lot of research, a lot of study to bring everything together to to a modern day situation. I wanted it to be the kind of thing that people could do as a group study, maybe as a small group, uh, certainly fits well for uh, family devotions or just individual Bible study. Uh, but with these different topics, so if you wanted to study, what does the Bible teach on faith? Or what does it teach on worship? Or what does it say about evangelism or healing or whatever the different topic might be? I wanted people to be able to uh, do this as an individual study or as a group study 
And uh, the chapters are fairly short. And one thing I included in questions Jesus asks that uh, I, I hadn't thought of in the first chapter uh, was I included something in each chapter from church history as well. Mm -hmm. Because when I wrote the first chapter and I did a speaking tour and I went out and talked about uh, the book, um, in these churches where I was talking, I would name people that I thought would be known by everybody in the church. John Wesley or Jonathan Edwards or Charles Spurgeon or Andrew Murray or some of these names. And I got these blank stares. And, uh, and I would ask, are you familiar with these names? Do you know who I'm talking about? No. D.L. Moody. Do you know who? No, never heard of them. And so uh, it occurred to me that we've kind of impoverished ourselves within contemporary Christianity by not knowing so many of the people who have um, kind of laid a foundation for us in, in wrestling through some of these issues. So in this book, I just have a, at least a short snippet in every single chapter, uh, f not just from scripture, but also from uh, individuals within church history too, just to help kind of introduce us to some of these great men and women of the faith from the past 2,000 years. I love the fact that every single chapter starts with a personal story or something interesting. You do a great job of drawing the reader in. Thank you. But the fact that this could be read, I mean, it, it's, it's a, it's, it could be considered a manual in a sense, because mm. like you said, it does have that background. Um, I found myself wanting to read from chapter to chapter, but loving the fact that you can pick just to say you want to study more on discipleship. So you just jump right to chapter four and um, it's okay that you haven't read yes. before and it's okay that you haven't read after because this is going to be a launching pad to give you that nugget which you need to get started to be able to then continue to study further on that subject. So I had the Old Testament study with questions God asks, the New Testament study, particularly the Gospels uh, with questions Jesus asks. And, and there's one question that Jesus asked that was outside the Gospels and that was a question that he asked to uh, Saul on the road to Damascus where he said, Saul, Saul, why do you persecute me? And so I wrote that uh, chapter on uh, Christian persecution and the persecution of, of the church across the world and throughout church history. And, um, but for the most part, it's focused on the Gospels. And so part of why I, I wrote the book is I've seen that what, I've worked in Christian publishing for 22 years. I've seen that what tends to sell um, are what we call self-help books. So if you can teach somebody how to get out of debt in 30 days, how to lose weight in 30 days, how to revolutionize your marriage in 30 days, those kinds of books sell. Um, Bible studies tend not to sell, and part of it is that they're academic often, and people kind of get bogged down in the tedium. So what I wanted to do was I wanted to take really big concepts, you know, the big issues of the Christian faith, and I wanted to make them accessible. I wanted anyone, whether you have a theological background or not, well, even if you're a brand new Christian, that you could dive into this and read it, and it would be enjoyable, and it would be understandable. And so I try very hard to explain terms, if I'm using a big word, theological word, explain what that is and what that means. And so um, I, I really attempted not to just shoot over everyone's head. I want them to, to get a, a thirst for the scripture and to come to really uh, develop Bible study as a, a part of their daily life. I, I think it's so important and it's such a neglected mm. aspect of Christianity today that um, unfortunately we neglect scripture. So I want to point people to scripture and I hope these books will be part of that process. Well, Israel Rain, the book is called Questions Jesus Asked. Thank you for writing it oh. because as, I, as we were talking before this interview, I get so many books that are given to me and I, I look at so many new books and there's a lot of self-help books. There's a lot of books that don't really dive in. And this one, I think, dives in in a way that is not daunting. Mm. You can sit down and read this um, without worrying that you're going to have to go look up every single word. It's going to speak to you, but yet it's going to teach you. And I, I think that that very beneficial, not just for the Christian community, but for the entire reading community as well. There's a verse that jumps out to me in John 17, 3. It says, this is eternal life, that they may know you, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom you have sent. And so that was really the purpose behind the book. I want people to know God. I want them to know Jesus Christ, because that's the big, I mean, that's eternal life. Right. And so uh, if that happens, if I can encourage that uh, through these books, then um, it was definitely worth writing it and uh, I, I think people will be encouraged and blessed by it. And I'm grateful for the uh, opportunity to be able to share it here.
All right, well, we still have one copy of this book and you can win that copy. As you know, we have had a giveaway going on. All you have to do is email faithandfriends at WTLW.com to get your entry or go to our website, faithandfriends.wtl or faithandfriends.com. Just look at the screen. The information is on the screen. Enter to win this book, or you can go to Israel's website. Possibly you'd like to have him come speak in your area, or you'd like more information about the other books that he has written. All of that information can be found on that location as well. Israel Wayne, author of Questions Jesus Asks, Where Divinity Meets Humanity. Thanks so much for joining us today. Oh, thank you. God bless.